second throw. Once more for the Reds in game number one. Rose at third base, Griffey in right field, and Morgan at second base. Foster in left field. Bench at first base, Concepcion at shortstop. The bottom third again will have Werner catching, Collins in center, and Charmian Bill pitching. We say a big doubleheader today because, as we pointed out, the Reds are one game away from the top spot in the Western Division. A couple of Cincinnati victories today behind Sarmiento and Seaver. And a loss by the San Francisco Giants would put the Reds at the top of the heap. And, Joe, we'd certainly like to be able to lay claim to that come the end of this day of baseball. Well, that famous uh, quote, you can't win two if you don't win the first one. I'd say our chances are even. I'm glad you remembered that today. <laughs> I forgot it. You certainly did. And we split. Yeah. But we'll take two this afternoon. We got really uh, a couple of good pitches going for us, and certainly Bob Shirley, as we pointed out, did a pretty good job against the Reds last year. When you think about it, four beat us four times in six decisions, which is a pretty good record. And I guess you have to uh, feel that. Uh, we're going to have our hands full in the first game. And, of course, Tom Seaver and John D'Aquisto in the second. And D'Aquisto uh, is very capable of pitching fine baseball if he has his control. So it could be an interesting afternoon here at the Riverfront here in our second doubleheader of the year. Well, we look forward to it, as we hope you will. We had the big pregame ceremonies. The salute to Pete Rose here today. Rose given a number of gifts from uh, the Cincinnati Reds management and also from various and sundry city and state officials that were on hand here. We're about ready to play baseball, and with the Reds on the field, the playing of our national anthem. Copyrighted broadcast is presented by Authority of Cincinnati Reds Incorporated and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Cincinnati Reds Incorporated is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Cincinnati Reds Incorporated. Danny Sarmiento going to the mound for the 14th time this season and the second time as a starting pitcher for Cincinnati. Back on the 7th of May, Danny started in the second game of that twin bill against Montreal and picked up a victory in that game, pitching extremely well, giving up a half dozen base hits in as many innings, struck out four, walked a batter intentionally and allowed two runs. In fact, he was really rolling in his first major league start that particular day until being touched for a home run by Expos outfielder Andre Dawson in the sixth inning. So Manny not only will be trying to go 2-0 and today as a starter for the Reds, but he will also be seeking his fourth win in five decisions. As Joe pointed out, he's got a fine 120 earned run average and has given up only 17 base hits in 30 and one-third innings. The Reds defeated the Montreal Expos on Thursday night, knocked off the Padres 4-3 to Friday night, on the two out seventh inning home runs by Joe Morgan and George Foster, and then on a wild and woolly one here yesterday, the Reds struck for six runs in the eighth inning and came up with a come from behind 10 to 6 win. Gene Richards having a super series. He's five for nine with a home run and a run batted in. Leading off for the San Diego Padres, Sarmiento deals and the pitch is outside a ball, and our doubleheader here at Riverfront is underway. 288 batting average for the Padres center fielder. He's homered a couple of times and has driven in 13 runs. 
Fastball over on the inside, and the count evens at one ball, one strike. Ozzie Smith is on deck. He's their shortstop, and he'll be followed by left fielder Oscar Gamble. Sarmiento, a ball and a strike. Rose playing close to third base. Richards with good speed. Guy's played a number of positions for the Padre Club. Center field in this series. He's played in left field in the past and also first base. He bounces one to Rose. Rose will throw him out at first base. Well, as things turned out, Pete plays Richards perfectly because it was a soft one hopper right along the line, and Rose had no problem at all throwing him out. One away in the first inning. Here's the shortstop, Ozzie Smith. He's a 271 batter with no homers and 11 runs knocked in. Up eight times in the series, has had three hits and has driven across a run. Rose will, for Smith, play as he did for Richards. The first pitch is a fastball high. Johnny Bench at first base with Joe Morgan at second, Dave Concepcion at short, and Pete at third. Foster in left field, Collins in center, Griffey in right, and Werner the first game catcher. Swing and a foul. Count even to Smith at one ball, one strike. This is the second double header of the season for Cincinnati. We split one here earlier, as we mentioned, against the Montreal Expos. Werner hanging a sign, and Sarmiento one wanting to Smith. That's a check swing bouncer to the box. Sarmiento throws to bench, two down. Well, Manny throwing ground balls to both Gene Richards and Ozzie Smith, and he'll go to work now on left fielder Oscar Gamble. In case you missed it last night, the Dodgers defeated San Francisco 3-2 to in L.A., when reliever Randy Moffitt entered the game with the bases loaded in the last of the ninth inning and promptly hit Billy Russell with a first pitch. That forced him the winning run. Here's a pitch, and it's tying away for a ball. So those two teams have played twice in the series at Dodger Stadium. San Francisco won 10-6, or 10-7 on Friday night, and the Dodgers coming up with a one-run victory last night. Swung on, line drive, left center, base hit. Collins sweeps into the gap to cut it off. Gamble takes a turn. He's going to hole with a two-out single. First base hit in the game goes to San Diego left fielder Oscar Gamble, and that'll continue the inning for right fielder Dave Winfield. Winfield pretty much relegated to that of a spectator in the first two games. He did pinch it here Friday night, but he's been suffering from a slightly injured left shoulder that has kept him out of the lineup. They're hoping that that shoulder will not bothering him to the extent that he'll have to come out early today. In fact, they're hoping he'll be able to play both ends of the twin bill. Started off fast as the season opened, but right now hitting a 265, leads the club with six home runs and has knocked in 21 runs. Right-hand batter, he swings and fouls it away. Winning pitcher last night for Los Angeles was Terry Forster. The loss went to Gary Lavelle. Darrell Evans at his third home run of the series for the Giants. Steve Garvey got one for Los Angeles, and they played it before 51,370. So they've drawn about 104,000 for the first two games for the wrap-up coming this afternoon. Starting pitchers' probables will be Bob Nepper, 5-1, a left-hander for the Giants, and right-hander Bert Hoot. Strike one pitch on the way to Winfield. That's strike two call. Terry Tata, our first game umpire behind the plate. Paul Pryor's at first, Ed Vargo second, Charlie Williams at third. Imagine Mr. Williams is happy to get out of from that hot seat where he was located yesterday afternoon because it was a very controversial ball game in terms of calls made at the plate and by Charlie Williams. Winfield in a two-strike hole with Gamble at first, two down. And just tie with a fastball. Manny trying to spot that pitch just about in the same location that he got strike two call, but just a little bit high and out of the strike zone. On deck for the Padres, first baseman Gene Tennis. Outfield shading Winfield around toward left, and they play him deep. He's got excellent power. Werner setting up on the outside part of the plate now, and here's one that comes back toward our broadcast booth, but it's just off to the left.
So Dave Winfield checking in with third base coach Don Williams as the count stays at one ball, two strikes. Richards bounced to Rose, Smith tapped to the box, Gamble a single to left center. Sun drenched Riverfront Stadium. Sunday afternoon, double out of the Reds against the Padres. The pitch swung on, line drive, right center field. It is going to be caught by Griffey. Fine play. Ball was coming back into him as he went into the right center field alley and made a running grab of Dave Winfield's shot to end the inning. No runs, one hit, one left. After a half inning, the Padres nothing and the Reds are coming up. Why all the scratching there, Doctor? Well, that's the uh, latest mystery, Hemlock Stones. It's really getting under my skin. Oh, yes. You mean the Oaks, the case of the mysterious apartment. That's there. close, Hemlock. It's the case of the Oaks, all right. Poison Oaks. Uh -huh. I got it yesterday when you and I were running through the woods looking for apartments. You know the Oaks? What now, Stones? Well, first, we got to get into these booths here, Dobson. I hear the oaks are located on rolling ground adjacent to a creek. So you see, we'll follow this creek until we get to these rough salt cedar and brick apartments there. And we'll find an Olympic-sized pool, a sauna, an exercise room. Each apartment has a patio or balcony. You get one, two, or three-bedroom garden apartments from $170. A two-bedroom townhouse with a basement for 230 A friendly man will greet us and tell us a six-month lease is available, and we can have a pet if we wish. So, quit you scratching, Dotson, and let's get cracking. We must find these oaks. We'll take I-270 to the Georgesville Road exit, go north to Hall Road, and straight back to the oaks. Or we can call 878-4610. That is, if we have a phone handy, you see. Well, the action continues here at Riverfront tomorrow night as the Atlanta Braves come to town for the first of three big ones. First pitch Monday and Tuesday night is at 8.05. Then on Wednesday, it's a 12.30 business day special. And by the way, Wednesday is a senior citizen's day. Bargain prices for persons 65 and older. Plenty of seats available for all three dates for the Braves. So be on hand for all the fun and excitement. Bob Shirley will be working to Rose, Griffey, and Morgan in the bottom of the first inning. And as Joe pointed out earlier, this is a young man who had quite a bit of success against the Reds in 1977 with four victories against two losses. And he's got Rose swinging and bouncing to shortstop. Smith throwing to tennis, quickly one out. Well, Pete jumping on Shirley's first pitch for a bounce out to the shortstop. And here's Ken Griffey. This year, Shirley has won one of... Five decisions. He's dropped four games with a 584 earned run average. So started seven times, this being his eighth start and his eleventh appearance. Griffey batting 329 with two homers and 12 knocked in. Allman creeping in a bit of third base as Shirley comes to the plate and is taken outside for a ball. Griffey, last year, by his own admission, was 0 for 20 against Bob Shirley. You ask Ken Griffey what pitcher. He had the most trouble against last year, and this young man far and away would be the answer. Swing and a foul, and the count goes to a ball and one strike. A couple of wins today would put the Reds 10 over the 500 mark. They come into this game with a record of 23 wins and 15 defeats and 10-7 and seven here in the month of May. Well, did he offer at it? No, he did not. Ball two, two and one. Griffey... First gave indication he wanted to punt, but the pitch was low. He took it, and he's out in front two and one. Joe Morgan on deck. We're in the bottom of the first inning. No score in the game. Shirley comes to the plate, and Griffey hits the ground ball to short. Smith recovers after momentarily bobbling the ball and throws Griffey out. Two out with the bases empty for Joe Morgan. Joe hitting 266 with seven homers. Got number seven here on Friday night to tie the game up in the seventh inning. And a couple of runs batted in yesterday to give him 31, only two off the pace being set by league leader, Dodger center fielder Rick Mundy, who's driven in 33 runs. Shirley shakes off the Rick Sweet sign. Now the pitch. Morgan takes the curve for a strike. Dennis Thomas, Smith, Van Allman make up the San Diego infield at first, second, short, and third. Gamble in left, Richards in center, Winfield in right. Sweet doing the catching. The strike one pitch. Strike two call. Shirley quickly ahead of Morgan. Two strikes. 
He's ready with the next delivery. And this one's in the dirt as Sweet makes it pick up. Most of the San Diego pitchers are fast workers. It seems that over the last few years, they have all taken the cue from Randy Jones, who year in and year out will probably average out pitching the shortest games of any pitcher in the league. Shirley pretty much cut out of the same mold. He's all business. He grounds Morgan to the right side. Thomas fields it deep at second. Throws on to tennis in time, and that's the inning. Bob Shirley throws three infield ground outs. The Reds are out one, two, three, and after one. The Padres nothing and the Reds nothing. I know a friend when I see one. And I know a good thing when I get it. I know where to go when I need a helping hand. That's why. That's why when you're taking care of something important like your car, it's good to do business with somebody you know by his first name. Somebody who takes you and your car personally and treats it like it was his own. Somebody you ought to know. Your marathon man. Marathon Oil Company. We got together to do it better. And we do. We'll pause now for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. Follow the Reds all season long on Zebra 100, WRMZ, Columbus, Ohio, where you hear more of what you listen for. Here we go to the second inning. Gene Tennis will lead it off for San Diego. No score. We've completed one. Tennis right-hand batter, and the first pitch is in for a strike. Concepcion, you could say he's almost playing a shallow left field. That's about as deep as you're going to see Davey play for any hitter in this league and really pull around toward third base. Pitch, that's low as Werner plays it on the short hop. One ball and one strike. Tennis hitting but 225. Three homers, 11 RBIs. Up eight times in the first two games and has responded with three hits and a run knocked in. He swings and pops it up right side. That's going to be Johnny Bench's ball to play at first base. John in foul ground, and he gathers it in for the out. Tennis to pop out, and now second baseman Darrell Thomas. Four for four, going to the ninth inning of yesterday's game. He came up there with the bases loaded and two down, and Doug Bear smoked him with a strikeout to end the game. Thomas hitting 245. No homers and five RBIs. Switch hitter batting left-handed. He'll be followed by Bill Allman, the third baseman. High and away for a ball. You look at the job the Reds bullpen has done up to this point, and we talk about it constantly because it is such a radical departure from what we saw last year. There's two balls and no strikes. Now, you look, Sarmiento's got three victories, one of which was as a starter. Dave Tomlin winning the last two games against his former club. He's 3-1. and one. Bear has won a game and lost none. Borbone is 2-1. and one. Quite a productive year from the Cincinnati bullpen. 3 and nothing now on Thomas. Nine wins and three losses from the bullpenners. There's a call strike. Three and one on Thomas, one away. Outfield playing him straight away. Sarmiento kicks and fires, and that one is hit hard and into right field. Morgan started for it off to his left, but Joe saw he could not get to the ball, and Thomas continues his good hitting here at Riverfront Stadium. Second hit for San Diego. Bill Allman, 0 for 7 in the series, but batting 313 with 10 runs batted in. Roger Craig and his coaching staff quite pleased with the transition that Bill has made from shortstop to third base, opening up that short position for Ozzie Smith. There's a throw to first. 
young man who is very receptive to instruction and uh, you can see how it's paid off for him. Not much of a threat at that plate last year, but under the guidance of Alvin Dark, another throw to first. He has become a pretty good hitter and hopes to improve even more. Okay, the stretch. The runner goes. The pitch is swung on. Hits softly into left field. That's going to be a base hit. Here comes Thomas on to third base. And the runner goes into second. George Foster throwing off balance and throwing to third base, allowing Billy Allman to move to second. So San Diego with runners at second and third, one away, when really they ought to have them at only first and third. Foster, boy, sometimes you wonder about his play in the outfield this season. Well, they've scored that a two-base hit for Billy Allman. Giving the Padres runners at second and third, and with first base unoccupied, they are going to intentionally walk Rick Sweet and then pitch to the pitcher Bob Shirley with the bases loaded. So Sarmiento and the Reds in a bit of a problem here in the second. A single by Thomas, a double by Allman, and now the intentional walk to Sweet will load the bases for Bob Shirley. See what Shirley's done this season with that bat, because he's certainly got a chance to help himself right now. Been up eight times without a base hit. No Thomas at third, Allman at second, Sweet at first. David Concepcion talking to Manny Sarmiento at the pitcher's mound as Bob Shirley comes plateward. San Diego has led in each game in this series. They led 3-2 to two before the home runs by Morgan and Foster Friday night in the seventh inning. And yesterday, going to the eighth inning, they had a lead of 6-4 to four before the Reds scored six times to put it away. Now, Bench playing in shallow at first. Rose even with the back. Here's the squeeze that tapped out in front of the plate. And the run will score as the throw goes to first to get Bob Shirley. A good bunt by Shirley gets the first run of the game home as he drops it out in front of the plate and far enough. To get the man in, Donnie Werner went out. So did Manny Sarmiento as he came in off the mound to feel the ball and threw to Johnny Bench. And that'll be a sacrifice and a run batted in for Bob Shirley as Allman goes to third base and Sweet moves to second. Two out in the inning with a run in and here is Gene Richards who grounded out to third base to begin the game. Sarmiento stretches the pause and the pitch to the plate and that's high for a ball. Bob Shirley certainly doing his job. He was called upon to get a good bunt down, to get a run in, and that he did. one nothing Padres, two down, runners at second and third. The 1-0 pitch on the way to Richards. That is hit hard to Concepcion. Knocks it down, picks it up, has no play. Allman scores, 2 nothing San Diego. On to third goes Sweet. Into the plate comes Billy Allman, and let's see how they score that. That's going to be an error against Concepcion on the batted ball by Gene Richards. So San Diego back at it again today. They've scored twice here in the second. Here's Ozzie Smith. He had a check swing one hopper back to Sarmiento in the first inning. Pitch, swung on foul. Keep a close watchful eye on Gene Richards to see what he might be doing. He has swiped 11 bases in 17 attempts this season. Right-hander taking his time as Sweet leads at third base over at first is Richards. Two away in the inning. One strike pitch. That's taken high and off speeder. One ball and one strike to the Padres shortstop. 
We'll be seeing this club again, of course, beginning next Friday night out in San Diego Stadium. Playing them Friday and Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. That'll be the first leg of a two-city six-game road trip. After that, we'll be in Atlanta for three, and the Braves, of course, will be coming in here tomorrow night. There goes a runner at first, swung on line down the left field line, a foul ball. Richards taking a shot at second base as the pitch came to Smith, and he went the other way, but lined it foul along the left field line. In the series opener against the Braves tomorrow night at 8.05, Bill Bonham will be Sparky Anderson's pitching choice and for Bobby Cox's Braves, Mickey Mailer, a left-hander. Tuesday night, Freddie Norman against another lefty, Jamie Easterly. Wednesday night, Paul Mosco, another left-hander, and Preston Hanna. Well, we've seen a lot of them this season, and we're going to see three in a row from the Atlanta pitching staff. There goes Richards again, swung on, high fly ball. Get into left center field. Foster looks to Collins. Collins looks to Foster. George makes the catch, and that's the inning. San Diego, however, scores twice on two hits an error with two men left on. In the middle of the second in game one, San Diego two and Cincinnati nothing. You know, different folks have different ways to spend their time, enjoy their days. Me, I like to fish. I really do. Well, there's something good about a lazy creek. Helps me relax from a long, hard week like my Red Fox chewing tobacco, the relaxing chew. Well, it's soft and moist and mild for sure. The flavor's fresh. The taste is pure. Red Fox is best. I like it. Yes, I do. So I keep me an extra pouch of Red Fox by my side in my tackle box. When it comes to tobacco, those Red Fox folks come through. Why don't you try a Red Fox? Look for it in the white pouch with a picture of old Red taking it easy. Red Fox chewing the back end. Now it's better than ever. So if you like to relax, and I'll bet you do, settle down with a Red Fox chew, because Mr. Taking It Easy never tasted so good. Red Fox. If you're looking for a really distinctive gift for a big Reds fan, may we suggest one of the limited edition art prints in the series of greatest moments in Reds history. All prints of the Painting the World Champions have been sold, but prints are still available of the other three great moments. Johnny Bench's home run against Pittsburgh in the 72 playoffs, Pete Rose's collision with Ray Fossey in the 70 All-Star game, and Johnny Vandermeer's back-to-back no-hitters. All these prints are on display at the Reds 580 gift shop in downtown Cincinnati, or you can just call or write the Reds office for more information. We're down by a pair as we come to bat in the bottom of the second inning, and George Foster will lead it off against Shirley. Foster hitting at 333 and had the big blow in the eighth yesterday, a bases loaded triple. First pitch is high for ball one to him. Well, George has now driven in 29 runs and has hit six homers. Swung on, a foul out of here. One and one to count. George has had the game-winning hit now in three consecutive games and has knocked in seven runs in the last four. Checks his swing on a curveball. Two and one. In this series, he's gone five for eight with a home run and four runs batted in. So Foster is starting to crank it up offensively. Swung on, hit hard, but glove knocked down by Darrell Thomas. Picks it up, throws to first base in time. Thomas knocking the ball down as it was hit hard and off to his left and was able to recover in time to throw Foster out. One down for first baseman Johnny Bench. Johnny batting 241. Has hit seven home runs, one of three players on the Reds club to have hit that many. The other being the others being Joe Morgan and Danny Friesen. He grounds one on the hop to the shortstop Smith, who's getting an early workout. Throwing to first, two out. Bob Shirley has retired five batters in a row, and all five have hit ground outs on the infield. Coming to the plate now, the hottest hitter in the Reds lineup. The last 18 times of the play, Davey Concepcion has had nine base hits. Raising his average to 309. He's homered twice and has driven in 17 runs. 
Sparky pointing out today on the pregame show with the rise in the temperature. The ball club has started to regain the offense. Yesterday, a good case in point. 16 base hits. the second. With a run batted in Friday night. Had a base hit in two official times up yesterday. Walked twice, stole a base, and scored a run. Well, let's see how he fares here against Shirley. As a red spot, two San Diego, two early runs in the top of this inning, and now try to get it going with two out. Pitch is low for a ball. Maybe with a bunt single along the third baseline, Warner gets the first pitch run. chop along the third baseline. No play anywhere. Surely wanted to go to third. But Allman was off the bag, and that's going to be Ball was hit high on one down mound toward the third base line to field it. His inclination was to go to third base for a possible force on Concepcion, but Allman was well off the bag, and Shirley very wisely then held onto the baseball. So the Reds are wearing that third base line out. And now had the bases loaded with pitcher Manny Sarmiento up. From the windup, Shirley throws. Sarmiento takes the strike. Manny 0 for 5 this season. That's low and outside. One ball and one strike. Sepsion third, Werner second, Collins first. Two infield hits and sandwiched in between a base on balls to load them up with two down. Armiento checks his swing. Ball two. Two and one. Shirley has walked 16 batters in 37 and one-third innings coming into this start. All the time he can lose sight of the strike zone. Here's a ground ball hit to shortstop. Ozzy Smith underhands to Daryl Thomas. That's a force on Collins, and the second for Cincinnati is history. No runs, two hits, no errors, and three left. We'll go to the third, trailing the Padres two to nothing. Welcome home. You've had a long, long day. Sit down beside me. And ease your cares away. Let's have a fun. For San Diego, the lead it off will be left fielder Oscar Gamble and the first inning a single to center field, Morton by a score of two to nothing. They've had three hits in the game. Now before the game, Pete Rose honored for his three thousand hits in the major leagues, three thousand plus now, and Jim Ferguson has just dropped by with a well a what would you call it? A book. <laughs> As will be presented to the Hall of Fame, he has uh, the same book, and of, of each of them, has 3,000 hits. First pitch to Gamble was going outside, and I'll tell you, a lot of work has gone into this. And Darkus Patton, Jim McCurry, and Jim Ferguson, our publicity director, uh, 
really uh, had to go at it, not first. <laughs> but boy, that is really nice. He's awful proud of it. Swing and foul back by Gamble. Fergie, is, you say that Pete, uh, the only thing that he took back to the dugout really was the base hitch. That's that's common. You'd, you'd, right, you'd, yeah, you'd expect it. Yeah, he wanted to know if the two he got yesterday was in the book. <laughs> Another foul by Gamble, but count a ball, two strikes. Sarmiento has walked one. That an intentional walk to Rick Sweet in the second inning when they the two runs. That strike three call. Got him with a fastball at the knees. First strike out to Manny. One away here in the third, and the batter, Dave Winfield. Winfield out on a fine running catch by Kent Whippy in the right center field. The ball is, was really sinking and coming back at the end. Gene Sanders on deck. Not feel the box straight away for Winfield. Rope in the left center last night as Geronimo ran down in the ninth inning. Pitch inside to Winfield the ball. Second game pitchers, Tom Seaver for the Reds, and John Diapusto for the Padre. The 1-0 to Winfield. He takes a strike. Fastball on the inside corner. 1-1. One one. Three more doubleheaders. On June the 30th, Giants July 7th, and Bills on July 30th. Winfield checks and expects his ball in the inside corner, and he's not too happy with Pontius Park. All three of the doubleheaders will be twy-nighters for the 5.30 starting time. A ball two strikes to Dave Winfield. Manny Sarmiento down behind the mound, rubbing up the baseball and out of the rosin bag and steps back onto the pitching river. Manny, I don't know where he thinks he's got a base runner on or what, but he right now he's going to pitch from the stretch position. And now, Warner reminds him, and uh, he walks back off of the pitching rubber a little bit embarrassed. Winfield backs away from the plate. Now steps back in. One ball, two strikes. One out, the base is empty. Sarmiento winds and delivers. It swung on, chopped over the mound. Concepcion near the bag, running throw, got him. Two away, and Gene Tennis steps in. Tennis popped out the bench in foul territory at first base in the first inning, or leading off the second, rather. Two away, base is empty. Dave Concepcion about 10 to 12 feet behind the back line at short. A fastball misses inside the tennis. Maybe also pulled around to the left. side of the second base bag. The pitch check swing and it's low. 2-0. One game underway in the American League. Sarmiento the 2-0. Swing on and pull down. American League. Boston and Detroit. A doubleheader. Ball of North Cleveland. New York So, Chicago and Oakland, a doubleheader. California and Milwaukee and Texas and Seattle, single games. Pitch to tennis inside, three and one to count. All single games in the National League this afternoon, except in here, of course. Three balls, one strike to Gene Tennis. Sarmiento checking with Werner. As a sign and the 3 1. 
and it takes a breaking ball high, ball four. Second walk issued by Sarmiento with two out. Tennis moves on to first base, and the batter is Daryl Thomas. Thomas is single to right in the second inning and scored the first San Diego run. Thomas, the switch hitter, hitting left-handed against Manny Sarmiento. Ben's playing behind tennis at first. The stretch and the pitch. And there's a delayed steal. Throw down to Concepcion, and tennis makes it. Now, Gene Tennis on the delayed steal and caught Don Warner and Dave Concepcion, although Dave did get there, but tennis had it stolen. So... Stolen base for Gene Tennis. That is his third stolen base of the year in four tenths. Five to Thomas. Ball one. Armiento set. And a pitch. Swung on, that's bounced to Morgan. Joe off to his left pass. It throws to Bench, and that's the inning. For the Padres, no runs, no hits, no errors. A runner left on base. The third of the third. San Diego 2, Cincinnati nothing. Imagine this. You're standing in front of a house built from only new sash windows and one new sash door. Now let's go inside and experience new sash door. Sash Bryant came from the perfect custom fit. And more information, call New Sash Collect. 267-8396. Your new sash windows also tilled in for easy cleaning and for enjoying the best spray and foul air. Before Pete Rose steps in, we'll pause for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. Complete Cincinnati Reds baseball coverage is yours on Zebra 100, WRMZ, Columbus, Ohio. Pete Rose will lead it off here in the third inning. As Terry Tater inspects the baseball at the request of Rose, Pete, leading off the game for the Reds, grounded to Ozzie Smith at shortstop. Pete, a 298 batting average with three home runs and 16 RBIs. Reds have had two hits off Bob Shirley, both infield. A bunt by Concepcion and Collins. Chopper off to the left of the mound. Rose takes a strike from Shirley. Shirley, in his first Major League start last year, beat the Reds here at Riverfront 12-4. to Had a shutout through eight innings. And we beat Shirley in San Diego by a score of... Four to one. There's a pitch high inside to count evens. One to one. Ball a strike to Pete. A wind the pitch. Rose takes it inside. It's 2 and 0. Make it 2 and 1. Ball bouncing out of sweet squat mid. Pete hangs the sign for Shirley. He shakes one off. Now the 2 1 to Rose. That's a check swing and a strike call. 2 and 2. Rose, Griffey, and Morgan here in the third inning for the Reds. Padre is leading two to nothing. Two two on the way. Rose swings and misses a fastball. First strikeout for Shirley. One out, and Ken Griffey steps in. Kenny bounds to Smith is short. His first time up.
Hot field straight away to Ken. Early delivers. Fastball is high. Early making his eighth start of the year. The 1-0. Griffey tries to butt and misses. Owen make it even at one ball, one strike. And he's trying to push the ball third base side. Hitting 329 with two home runs and 12 RBIs. A line the pitch. Griff swings on it and bounces at the tennis. Wide at first, throwing to Shirley, and they get him easily. Play going three to one. Tennis to Shirley, two out, and Joe Morgan the batter. Joe grounded to Daryl Thomas in the first inning. And the pitch. Morgan takes it for a call strike. Certainly had walked 16 in 37 innings coming into this afternoon's first game. The 0-1. That's just high. Fast ball and count evens. Ball a strike. Reds with the bases loaded in the second and two out. Manny Sarmiento grounding hard to Smith at shortstop. Morgan takes ball two. Smith feeling Sarmiento's ground ball and forcing Collins at second base to end the inning. Two balls and strike to Morgan. Two out, base is empty. Two one, swung on and fouled straight back. That even to count at two and two. And yesterday's game, Gaylord Perry and Raleigh Fingers not happy at all with the plate umpire Charlie Williams. Two two delivery going outside, full count out of Morgan. Foster on deck. Shirley with the payoff to Morgan. That swung on and hit in the right field. Dave Winfield waiting on it, back pedaling a few steps, and he has it best the inning. Reds out in order here in the third, nothing across, and after three innings, the Padres two, the Reds nothing. Oh, great master of the mountain, for so long we have been searching for the, uh... My son, I know. You search for the secret of your life, the true meaning of eternity. Now, now, no. my name is M. Lock Stones, and we're searching for the Oaks. My guru told me there'd be days like this. But you see, the Oaks are apartments of rough salt, cedar, and bricks, surrounded by rolling ground, backed by a creek. Each apartment has a private patio or balcony, and the Oaks has sun. An exercise room and an Olympic sized pool. Garden apartments started $170 in a two bedroom townhouse with a basement for $230. Master, you can slip into a six month lease and you can have a pet if you wish. So you see, Master of the Mountain, why we must find the oak. Headlock Stones, the Oaster on the West Side. Take I 270 to Jordan's New Road Exit. Go north to Hall Road and straight back to the Oaks. Hours are 10 to 7 weekdays and 10 to 4 Saturday and Sunday. And you may phone. 878-4610. San Diego on the fourth inning will send up the bottom three in the order. Bill Allman, Rick Sweet, and Bob Shirley. Padres 
Leading two to nothing. They've had three hits off Simon and Toe. Manny has struck out one and walked two, one of them intentionally. One of the runs and an earned run against Manny, but a run. He delivers a pass to Harmon, and it's on the inside corner called strike. Harmon with a double along the left field line in the second inning. And scored the second part of the run. Oh, one delivery. That's down low, and it's even at one and one. A one one delivery. Inside. Two balls to strike. Samiento back to the plate. Almost swings. Lines at the rows. He's picking it right off of the top of the turf. And Charlie Williams is a little hesitant about calling the play. He's actually turning around and looking at Williams and saying, hey, uh, what is it? One out, and the batter, Rick Sweet, Padre catcher. Pitch to Sweet, taking low and inside a ball. Sweet intensely passed in the second inning. Bob Shirley, the pitcher on deck. And the throw. Inside, three balls, no strike. Here's the throw. That's it for call strike three one. Gets a sign from Don Williams, the Padre third base coach, and the 3 1 on the way. Back two called on the inside corner. First count now to the street. Sweet home in Longview, he was born in Longview, Virginia. There's ball four along inside, and the second time, Sweet walk. Third walk issued by Manny Sarmiento, and that'll bring the pitcher Bob Shirley to the plate. And she checks with Williams, the third base coach, and you would assume he would be bunning, but you cannot assume. Pete charging the line. Bunt first base side. Good bunt. Surely on to first, but Ben throws him out. Morgan covering and the sacrifice works. The second sacrifice for Shirley. He put down a squeeze bunt in the second inning for the first Padre run. The play going bench to Morgan on the put out of Shirley. Two away as Sweet moves on to second base and the batter, Gene Richards. Richards over for two. He Rounded the third in the first inning and reached on an error by Dan Concepcion in the second. All but scoring on the error. Second run for the Padres in that particular inning. This is a 288 batting average. Armiento, the stretch, looks back at Sweet at second and delivers to Richard a strike call. Off the bag at second, Sammy at two. Looks to Don Warner, has the sign. And the old one. That's down low at off speed pitch. One ball, one strike. Two. A 
one one pitch. That's a trick swing by Richard Shai. Two balls to strike. Two out, Richard Jordan at the point of state at second base. There's the two one. That's outside. Three balls. One strike now to Gene Richards. Now they're going to intentionally pass him. This will be the fourth walk issued by Sarmiento. Richards moves on to first base, and the shortstop Ozzy Smith steps in. Smith, and two times the plate, has bounced to the mound and the fly ball across to the left field. I see the left hand is hitting, or he's hitting against right handed pitchers of 176 batting average. He swings and grounds out the middle. Morgan has it. He will throw the first time. That's there by Joe moving off to his right and coming up and throwing Ozzy Smith out. <laughs> Reds trail the Padres two to nothing as way back the fourth thing it'll be the middle of the lineup. Foster, Bench, and Concepcion. George out on a nice play by Daryl Thomas, the Padres' second baseman in the second inning. Rose put in one five to Thomas. Thomas knocking it down and picking it up and throwing Foster out. George, a 333 batting average with six home runs and 29 RBIs. Had six doubles and four triples. George, a little surprised that he had four triples. Shirley delivers and Foster swings and chops it foul off the third baseline. Alec Dramas heals the ball and moves it to Charlie Williams. Williams, the third base umpire, inspects it and says, We'll have another ball. Only one to count. Foster with six game winning hits for the Reds. Next to him is Dave Concepcion with two, Danny Dreesen with two, Griffey with two, and Morgan with two. Thirdly, the old one. High and outside, and I can't even the ball a strike for Foster. the sign is the one one. Such swing and a foul of the foul. All off the bit of sweep, so uh, uh, not foul at the time. Two balls, one strike. There is walk one and struck out one. Here's his two one to Foster. Swung on and missed a low fastball and the count even is two and two. Center field. Two two the count. Little shakes off the sign. Sweet. Now Foster backs away from the plate. After three innings at Cleveland, the first game for the double hitter, Baltimore and Cleveland, no score. It's Shirley Wines and the 2 2. A split free call. Inside the corner, second strike on for Bob Shirley. That'll bring Johnny Bennis to the plate. John grounded to Smith and shortstop in the second inning. Bennis hitting 241. Seven home runs, 20 RBIs. John has had seven doubles. Early delivers, Bench checks, a strike call in the outside corner. A 
be a quick worker, the 0-1, going outside, a ball of strike. We get our first look at the Atlanta Braves tomorrow night as they open a three-game series. 1-1 one, one delivery. Now, no two balls to strike. And as Marty pointed out, we'll see three more left-handers. Two-one on the way, swung on, a very high pop in the infield, right side, and Daryl Thomas calling for it, waiting on it, he has it two up. Two away, and Dave Concepcion, the batter. Dave, a base hit in the second inning, a bunt, third base side, it rolled along the line, and actually hit the third base bag, Allman watching it all the way. Davey. 309 coming in with the base hit, and he's up to 314. Ernie winds and delivers. Concepcion takes a slider for a strike. Pitch. Good pie. 1 Three plus innings, the Reds have hit just one ball out of the infield, and that was Morgan's fly ball to end the third inning to Winfield and right. 1 1 delivery. That's the breaking pitch in for a call strike, and it's 1 and 2 to Concepcion. Ernie delivers, and Concepcion swings. Fair ball along the left field line, and Davey makes the turn at first on his way to second. The throw by Richard. Nobody at second, and actually Bob Shirley backing up the play as he got the ball about 20 feet away from the second base bank. So Concepcion continues his back. Maybe it's nice double here and beats the second base with two outs in the batter. On Warden. Third hundred and half and off. Capsule shot down between Almond and the third base back. Wonder if takes low a ball. Takes a strike. One and one. Which team with three hits now, but the Padres with two runs, leading two to nothing. Stretch the pitch. One or checks a fastball. Inside corner ball strike two. One and two. Shirley 12 and 18 with the Padres. Here's the one two to Warner. He swings and chops one off to the left of the mound. Shirley has it throwing to tennis, and that's the inning. The Reds no runs, they hit no errors. A runner left on base. And at the end of four, San Diego two, Cincinnati nothing. When your car needs an oil change, chances are what you say is change the oil, which is all you need to say unless you want to make a change for the better. Namely, New Ultra D motor oil from Marathon. Marathon's new Ultra D motor oil is a special blend of natural and synthetic ingredients that's really different from conventional blends. A special blend that means improved engine protection for you under all kinds of weather and driving conditions. New Ultra D motor oil has special anti-wear additives to protect the critical parts of your engine longer than conventionally blended multi-grade oils up to 15,000 miles. Better motor oil means a better running engine every time you drive your car, wherever you drive. Make a change for the better with new Ultra D. A change for the better from the people who do it better. Marathon Oil Company.
Four inning totals show San Diego with two runs, three hits, no errors. The Reds, no runs, three hits, and one error. The Oscar Gambles lead it off for the Padres in the fifth and back to the action, Marty Vinnerman. Thank you, Joe. Gamble has had one of San Diego's three hits. That was a first inning single, but then as a leadoff batter in the third, Sarmiento got him looking at a call third strike. Gamble went feeling tennis here in the top of the fifth inning. Danny allowing a couple of runs in the second, one of which was an unearned run. Gamble and that crouch of his and on top of the plate. As Sarmiento looks to Werner, starts to the windup, and Oscar steps away. Here's a pitch, taken outside a ball. Keeping a close watch on what transpires out of Dodger Stadium this afternoon. That game will probably be getting underway about 4 or 4.30. Flag is called. Gamble arguing with Terry Cueto, but it'll be a flag nevertheless. Gamble and on Gamble. The San Diego team will be flying right back home after the doubleheader today, and then we'll be meeting the Dodgers tomorrow night. In San Diego, Bobo Cinco, who was supposed to uh, pitch the first game against us to go, but instead Bob Shirley went in there, and Ocinco will pick tomorrow night. Now, Gamble and Cueto getting a little bit heated. And Cueto said, Cueto said, Cueto said, Cueto said, Cueto said, Cueto said, ultimately called out on strikes, and now when Tater says a strike on a pitch that got the inside corner, he takes it to the plate umpire once again. The 1-1. Swung out and pulled foul, and deep down the right side. One ball, two strikes. Gamble fouls this one straight back, and it'll drop out of play. San Diego's offense has not been what Roger Craig hoped it would be this season, a team batting average of 250, but the guys who are supposed to hit so far have not done so. Here's a fly ball hit to left field. Foster calling, and he makes the catch. Say Gamble's batting average of 212. Dave Winfield hitting 265. George Hendrick not in the lineup here in the first game, batting only 225. And these are people that are not what you would call 300 hitters year in and year out, certainly figure to hit higher than they are hitting right now, and certainly providing a lot more sock. Hendrick has hit only three home runs. Winfield has struck, but well, he's hit six, and he leads the club, and and you've got Gambler with 31 last year. He's at only two. Pitch just below the knees to Winfield for a ball. He was robbed in the first inning. Ken Griffey going into the alley in right center to pick off his fly ball and then ground it out to Concepcion in the third. This one he fouls back, and it's even. One ball, one strike. Padres have not been a good road club. They dropped 13 of 19 while posting a 10 and 7 record at home. We'll be rooting like heck for them after today and for the next three nights when they go against the Dodgers. You can bet on that. Swung on and grounded hard up the middle for a base hit. That's the fourth San Diego hit and Dave Winfield's first. And in now will be first baseman Gene Tennis. Dennis has popped out to bench. He's also had a base on balls and pulled off a delayed steal. That was back in the third inning. A slew of double headers in the base big leagues today, majority of them being played in the American League. Boston, Detroit, Baltimore, Cleveland, New York, Toronto. Here's a pitch to tennis, swing and a miss. And a little bit later on, Chicago and Oakland for a pair. While the Reds and the Padres, the only doubleheader in the National League. Pittsburgh will be at Montreal. Philadelphia 
at New York, the Cardinals at Chicago, Atlanta at Houston, and of course the Giants at Los Angeles, all single games. Two to nothing. Padres lead in the fifth inning with Winfield at first and one down to pitch. Warner calling for a pitch out, but guessing and guessing wrong. Winfield staying at home at first and a one ball, one strike count on tennis. Reds infield, a double play depth. Morgan shading tennis toward the second base bag. The outfield pulled around toward left, and they're playing him deep. There goes Winfield, a pitch out by Warner. Throw down to second, not in time. They pitched out and still didn't get him. Well, the Padres, with their second stolen base of the game, Dennis had one a couple of innings ago, and Warner calling for a pitch out, and Winfield still able to steal the base. Two and one to count now on Gene Tennis as the Padres try to get a third run of the afternoon home. Here's a two one. High inside, ball three. Following tennis will be second baseman Daryl Thomas. Sarmiento now looking out towards center field. Looks in to get the sign from Warner as Winfield leads at second. The stretch. Slow come down to the belt and the pitch. Ball four. And his control is certainly not what it normally is today. That's the fifth walk he has allowed, although two of the five have been intentional walks. Daryl Thomas is single and scored a run. He's grounded out to second base. Thomas, as you probably know, a former San Diego Padre. Then going on to the San Francisco Giants. Spent the last three seasons with that club before coming back over to San Diego on a trade back in March for... Mike Ivey. And a starter for the most part throughout his major league career. Two men on, one man out. Manny in a jam in the fifth as he deals. Thomas had taken strike, and now we've got Dave Tomlin up and loosening in the Cincinnati bullpen. Winfield at second. Gene Tennis at first, one out in the inning. Here's the bluff back towards second base as Sarmiento spun off that pitching rubber. David Concepcion playing games with Winfield, trying to keep him close. Now Thomas out of the batter's box and looking to third base coach Don Williams. Don knew over there this season. Last year he was a first base coach with Joe Amalfitano at third, but Joe moved on to the Chicago Cub organization. One ball, one strike. Williams moved from the first base box to the third base box with Phil Roof, former major league catcher, now at first base in coaching for San Diego. Count of a ball and a strike. Here's a pitch. That's just high, and it's two and one on Thomas. Reds winning the last two nights against this team to close that gap between themselves and the San Francisco Giants and could move into first place with a big, big afternoon here today. The 2-1 on the way, swung on, hit in the air. Off third, Pete Rose going back toward the stands down beyond the San Diego dugout, and the ball bounds up into the seats. Two balls and two strikes. And Thomas way away from the plate. He's down to the right, walking around with his hands on his hips. 
as Sarmiento rubs up the baseball and Tomlin continues to get ready for Cincinnati. Billy Allman's on deck. Sarmiento in no hurry stands off to the back slope of the pitching mound with his back to the plate and rubs up the baseball. Getting started with a fly out of Oscar Gamble to left field, but Winfield and single to center, stole second. Gene Tennis is out of base on balls. Thomas slowly climbs back in as Sarmiento gets set to go to work. Two balls, two strikes to count. Check of the runners at first and second base. The pitch, this one's foul back and We'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. Follow the exciting Cincinnati Reds action in 1978 on FM 100, WRMZ, Columbus, Ohio. Okay, the battle continues between Sarmiento and Thomas. Manny throws strikes, Darrell fouls him off. Right-hander will crank it up still again. And his break-even pitch to the plate is grounded to shortstop. Concepcion to Morgan. Morgan quickly on to finish. He got the double play. A fifth stretch by John was the thing that sealed the fate of Darrell Thomas. No runs, one hit, one left. We're halfway through the first of two at Riverfront this afternoon, and we trail the Padres two to nothing. The ones you love and the things you like will always be secure. Make friends with tomorrow, bring insurance to be sure. Every business executive tries to hedge against inflation. Many succeed by purchasing real estate. Your Grange agent offers this caution. As real estate values increase, so should insurance coverage. Homes purchased for $30,000 a few years back now may sell in the 60s. Unfortunately, some owners have not added extra insurance coverage. This could be bad news in the event of a heavy loss. So make friends with tomorrow. Guard against inflation today. Call your nearest Grange agent. There's nothing like the feeling that you get when you know you're safe now and secure. Make friends with tomorrow. A lot of great baseball is coming up for Reds fans this summer at Riverfront. We'd like to take a minute right now to tell you about the bang-up 4th of July series the Reds have planned. It'll be the Reds and the Astros for three 805 games July 3rd, 4th, and 5th. On the 3rd now, the new Christy Minstrels will entertain in a pregame salute to America. After the game on the 4th, there'll be a spectacular fireworks show. And then on the 5th, we'll have Country Music Night with Bill Anderson and his show entertaining before the game. Be on hand. Bottom of the 5th inning, and it'll be Dave Collins, possibly a pinch hitter for Manny Sarmiento, and then Pete Rose, the Reds. And through four innings, got a number done on him by Bob Shirley. He shut us out on only a trio of base hits. Here's Dave Collins, and the pitcher swung out and fouled out of play to the right. Collins had an infield hit to third base in the second inning. In fact, the two of the three hits have been of the infield variety. The other one, a double to left field by Concepcion in the fourth. Shirley with a pitch, and here's a slowly hit ground ball to shortstop. Ozzie Smith gets rid of it in a hurry, and out. Close play at first base. Collins can flat out move down the line, but Ozzie Smith with that good quick release and a strong throw to tennis got him by a half step. Rick Arbach will be in to bat now against Bob Shirley as a pinch hitter for Manny Sarmiento. A while between appearances for Rick Arbach, he was somewhat under the weather on the last road trip, so a little activity at all. Batting 200 with three hits and 15 times up, he takes the first pitch low. Has one home run and three RBIs and a double, so two of his three hits this season have gone for extra bases.
Pitch is high, ball two, two and nothing. That's a fastball at the letters for a call strike. Sarmiento goes five innings, allows four hits and two runs. One of them earned. He struck out one and walked five, two intentionally. So Manny pitching well today in his second start of the season. Strike two is number half back, two balls and two strikes. to get it going. Only down by a couple of runs. There goes Arbach. Pitch is swung out. A line drive. They turn to left field. Arbach comes on to third base and he'll be in standing. Arbach is running and Rose lined to throw up simple to left field. He's got him on the corner for 10 Griffey and Rick Sweet calls time and goes to the mound to talk with his pitcher. a threat. In the fifth inning, we loaded the bases in the second with two down, but Manny Sarmiento was at the plate. He hit into a force out. Had a two-out double from Davey in the fourth, but Warner bounced to the box, and now here in the fifth inning, a one-out walk to Arbach, and the Reds playing run and hit. Rose lines a single to left field, and Rick goes around the third. Ken Griffey bounced to short. He's grounded out first base into the pitcher. See how Shirley fares in this first and third one-out jam. He delivers, and Griffey takes it low and away. As left-handers, we have split 16 decisions right down the middle. Counting this game, we'll see lefties in four of the next five. As we point out, three straight against the Braves. Here's ball two. By the way, Jim Ferguson and I are publicity director came in and pointed out to us that the flip-flop to Tuesday and Wednesday night pitchers for Atlanta, meaning that Preston Adam will be pitching on Tuesday night and Jamie Easterling will be pitching Wednesday night. Mickey Mailer will go in the opening tomorrow against Bottom. Now back by Griffey, two and one. Getting to break up the shutout bid by Bob Shirley in the fifth inning. The left-hander with a stretch and a pitch. Kenny fouls this one to the screen, and it's two balls and two strikes. Looking into the San Diego dugout and a little placement of his defense out on the outfield. He moves Dean Richards a step or two toward left. Now there's a throw to first base and Rose steps back. Two in the second for San Diego. That's been the extent of the left position. I think it's about two in a row. We've got one more still to come this afternoon. Tom Seaborg and John D'Apusco. If I'm going to buy the Andrews, then when I can. Okay, Shirley looked in for the sign. Backed off the 
pitching rubber, Bristol out of the box. Pitcher and batter both ready. Here's the two two. Way inside, a bad ball and Kenny back settling out of there. Bob Sterling has run the string out on Ken Griffin. Three balls, two strikes. Let's see what Rose will be doing. Bob Sterling on first potential round down to third. Rose is tying one at first. Shirley radically slowing down his pace now that he's in trouble. A three ball, two strike count on Griffin. And Rose holds this one popped up. Outside of third, and Allman is under and makes the count. Two down in the inning, a big out of Griffey as he pops up to Billy Allman. The batter will be Joe Morgan. Well, our Nashville Ball Club at Savannah this afternoon, and at the end of three innings, Nashville leading two to nothing. Morgan, who fly the right field his last trip to the plate, he's 0 for 2. He swings and fouls it back. Had a home run last year off Shirley. Take one of them right now. Joe batting 262 with seven homers and 31 RBIs. Pitching Shirley, swinging Morgan, foul off the glove of Sweet. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. I'm Shirley having tasted victory but one time in five decisions this season and trying to chalk up his fifth career victory in a little over a year against the Cincinnati Reds. High and outside, one ball, two strikes. Foster would be up next. Shirley sights the sign, is stretching his pitch. Bouncing ball right side. Thomas will throw Morgan out, and that ends the inning. So Bob Shirley able to get through the likes of Ken Griffey and Joe Morgan to keep the Reds off the board. No runs, one hit, two left. We've completed five. It remains the Padres, two and the Reds, nothing. goes five and well, we look up on the scoreboard and see where we have a nice group of folks here today from various and sundry groups throughout the tri-state area and Sonny from Fairfield is back. Yeah, he, he hasn't missed any games this year yet. He's <laughs> a <laughs> big red fan. He certainly is. <laughs> For those of our fans who don't know what we're talking about, had somebody tell me a couple of weeks ago that Joe's Old nickname used to be Sonny, and we note that Sonny from Fairfield is on hand today. A heck of a fan. Never misses a game. Do you have a, a nickname when you were a little boy? I can't think of any. But if I can rummage one up in my memory bank, I promise you won't find out. About I will invent one. <laughs> <laughs> I hesitate to think what that might be. Bill Tomlin working to Billy Allman as we go to the sixth and the pitcher's low for a ball. All Dave has done in this series is win both games in relief. To push his record on the season to three wins and a loss, he's 5-14 by way of an earned run average in making his 16th appearance. Swing and a miss. 
Allman has doubled and scored and is lined out to Pete Rose at third base. Just missing low and away. Two balls a strike. The uh, source of satisfaction for Tomlin to have had two wins in this series. He grounds Allman foul, third base side. Most Davis, you know, started out his pro career in the Cincinnati organization and was traded in 1973 to San Diego. Then went to the Texas Rangers, and that's where the Reds got him from during spring training. Now the plate umpire, Terry Tata, inspecting the baseball before throwing it out of play and giving Tomlin a new one. Allman, Sweet, and Shirley, the bottom third of the Padres batting order in the sixth inning. Each club with four hits, the Reds have committed the game's only error. 2-2 Two -two the count on the Padre third baseman. And the pitch. That's his grounded to third. Rose kicks it away and will have no play. The Reds are not playing good defense. Had four errors yesterday, and that's his second error in this game. So Allman reaches on the error by Rose, and here's Rick Sweet. He was intentionally walked in the second. He drew a base on balls of the unintentional variety in the fourth inning. The left-handed batter hitting 254. Takes the breaking pitch down and away. Interesting comments showing up in this morning's Cincinnati Inquirer from one John Montefusco, who chalked up the Friday night victory for the Giants over the Los Angeles Dodgers. Went seven and two-thirds innings in that game to get his third victory of the year. Inside, ball two. Montefusco said, I just hate these guys. He said, they can't lose gracefully. Dusty Baker thought I was throwing at him. Reggie Smith was mad because we protested. They just don't know how to lose, the count said. Here's a throw to first. Montefusco added, I'm telling you, this is a one-team race. Us, meaning the Giants. The Dodgers are battling for second. I'm sick and tired of hearing Lasorda talk, just like I'm sure he's sick and tired of hearing me. So the count is on his bad box. Down ball at first. Johnny Bench bobbles, recovers, throws to second, safe, all the way around, and another error. Routine ground ball hit right at Bench. John kicked it away, and then made a bad judgment decision in going to second with his throw because he had an easy out still at first base on sweep. But elected to try and get the out on Allman at second and comes away with nothing. Well, Marty, you're right. Uh, since John bobbled the ball, he has really, he can look to second, but, uh, you know, of course he did and thought he could uh, force Allman. But uh, now we're in a little bit of trouble because Surely a, a good bunner. He put on two good bunts, and he'll certainly be doing that again right here. And we got a new group up on the board. Check that top one out now. Is that a comedy act? <laughs> <Francesca> <laughs> it might have been, it's been considered by many to be that. Here's a pitch to Shirley. He swings away. Johnny Betts has it. No play at third. Throws to Morgan on the out at first. So Shirley took a cut at the pitch. Rather than squaring to bunt and uh, hit a soft one hopper to Johnny Bench. That won't be scored a sacrifice, but it's certainly as good as one. As the outplay on Shirley goes three to four at first base, Allman is at third now, and Sweet is at second. Manchester and Mark, what can I tell you? That's a whole mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> Which one is first? Franchester. I used to hate to go to school when I was a kid. The first day in school, they'd call roll. They'd say, Franchester Martin Brenneman Jr., and I'd meekly... You could be missing by the time uh, they got that out. <laughs> That's right. 
Okay, the infield will play out. As Gene Richards steps to the plate with runners at second and third, and whoa, a breaking ball almost got through Donnie Warner. Two errors in the inning by the Reds infield have given the Padres a major one-out threat. Tomlin's 1-0 pitch. Richards takes it inside. It's two balls in those strikes. They've had a run scored on him, an unearned run in yesterday's game due to some shoddy play in the field and suffering the same fate here in the sixth inning today. That's ball three low, but now he... Down by two runs at the end of one. Warner goes to the mound to talk with Tomlin. Ozzie Smith and the game has bounced out twice and fly to left field, and he's in now with the bases loaded and one out. End of one up in Montreal. The Pirates nothing and the Expos nothing. John Candelaria against Ross Grimsley. Tomlin comes to the bell, steps back off the pitching rubber. Allman third, Sweet second, Richards first. Padres leading 2-0 in the sixth inning, have the bases loaded. Here's a pitch to Smith. That's taken for a strike. Swung on, slowly hit to the left side. That's going to get a run in. Concepcion throws out Smith, but Allman scores. And the Padres now lead it by a score of 3 to nothing on Ozzie Smith's slow tapper to the shortstop. The end of two innings of play in New York. The Phillies lead the Mets 5-1. to one. Mike Schmidt has hit a three-run home run for Philadelphia, and... John Stearns has accounted for the only Mets run with his second home run of the season. Credit Smith with a run batted in. It's going to be his 12th of the season and bring to the plate the left fielder Oscar Gamble. Or at least scheduled at that, but well, let's see. He had come out of the dugout, but now goes back in. And it looks like they're going to send George Hendrick up to hit for Oscar Gamble. So George Hendrick will pinch it as the Padres have scored one to now lead by three. And with runners at second and third, Roger Craig would go with the percentages in this situation, bring on the right-handed batter to hit against the left-hander Tomlin in the hope that this guy Hendrick could come up with a base hit and get a couple more runs across. George batting 225. He's homered three times and he's knocked in six runs. Dave Winfield is on deck. Runners will take their leads at second and third, and Tomlin will work out of the windup as he comes to the plate. And Hendrick swings and pops it up. Maybe a play for Johnny Bench down beyond the Reds' dugout. No, it won't. Falls about two rows deep. In the American League in the fourth inning, Yankees 2, Toronto 1. In the fifth, Baltimore shutting out Cleveland two to nothing. Detroit won. Boston nothing in the third. All the rest of the games are not yet started. The one strike count in the pitch on the way to Hendrick. Swing at a miss strike two. No balls and two strikes. Dave kicks and fires. That one just slapped foul back of the plate.
in the open when Allman grounded to Rose. Pete coughed it up for an error. Rick Sweet then bounced to bench. He errored that ball. Shirley's ground out got runners to second and third after an intentional walk to Richard Smith. Grounded slowly to shortstop with Allman scoring. Two down, a run in the two-strike pitch. Fastball is up and away. Tomlin sights a sign. He comes to the plate. And missed with that pitch high. Two and two. Reds' relief corps has certainly gotten a lot of work this season. The Reds have only two complete games, one by Tom Seaver and the other by Bill Bottom. 2-2 pitch. That one line drive into left center field, a base hit. One run scores. Another run is home. The ball at the wall picked up by Foster and George Hendrick with a pinch hit two-run double to give the San Diego Padres a 5-0 advantage. So Roger Craig bringing Hendrick off the bench to swing to bat, and that he did with a line drive double to left center, driving two in. And I don't know whether Hendrick is hurt or what, but Roger Craig has gone out to second base now to check on him. Find out exactly what might be the problem. Hendrick is going to come out of the ball game. After doubling in a couple of runs, I don't have any idea from our vantage point exactly what might be his problem, but he's going to come out of the game and going into first base to run for him will be Chuck Baker. So three unearned runs have crossed the plate. In this sixth inning for San Diego, and they now lead by five, and Dave Winfield will step in. Dave has slide to run, bounce to short, single to center. One for three in the game. Winfield taking his time getting in there. As Baker now runs out of second base for George Henry. Backward glance at second. He delivers. Strike two call. And Winfield looking up at a two strike count. They backed away from the plate. Andres have made the most of five hits, but they've been helped, of course, by a leaky Cincinnati infield in this inning. This one foul back. And the count holding at no balls and two strikes. Out field straight away for Dave Winfield. Tomlin back to the plate. And this one, a broken bat fly ball into shallow center. That'll fall in front of Collins. Rounding third and onto the plate comes Baker. And it's now six to nothing, Padre. And San Diego building quite some lead in this inning. Dean Tennis will step to the plate. He's the eighth man to hit. 
Dennis has popped up, walked and walked again, so officially but 0 for 1 today. That's a strike to him as the ball bounces away from Warner, but not far enough to allow Winfield to advance. Dave with good speed edges off the first base bag. Tennis line drives a base hit in the left field. And the hits continue for San Diego. Runners at first and second now. And as Darrell Thomas comes to the plate, we'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. This is the voice of the Cincinnati Reds for Central Ohio. Zebra 100, WRMZ, Columbus, Ohio. Pedro Bourbon will go down to start getting ready in the Reds' bullpen as San Diego has scored four times and still had the inning alive after the base hit to left by tennis. Darrell Thomas a hit in three trips to the plate. And with his appearance at the plate, it means that San Diego is now batted around. Thomas swings, grounds one by the mound, and backhanded by Morgan, throws the Concepcion for the fourth play. Boy, that ball appeared to be picketed for center field, and Joe backhanded and got a quick underhand flip to Concepcion, who just got to the bag before Tennis did. In the inning, a big one for the Padres, four runs. On three base hits, two big Cincinnati errors, and two men left on. The end of five and a half at San Diego six, and Cincinnati nothing. That's right, take a pair of plump ones. Cobb's Jumbo Franks, regular and beef, are the plumpest ever made. You get eight juicy plump franks in a 16 ounce package. I like them because now I can make a hearty meal without skimping. They're plumpy when I make hot dogs with them. Take a pair of plump ones. Take a pair of cons. And talk about taste. Cobb's Jumbo Franks are seasoned just right. Perfect for a main meal. Mix them or match them, pop them in the pan, or put them on the grill. See how they plump right up, just like tender, meaty franks should. They're really man-sized. Remember, both the jumbo regular and the jumbo beef franks now come eight to the pound. And that's dinner size. Take a pair of plump ones today. They're the plumpiest. Take a pair of plump ones. Take a pair of cons. Enjoy cons wieners at home or at Riverfront Stadium. The Reds do their very best to make it easy for fans to purchase tickets for upcoming games and for the convenience of fans, the Reds have some 60 ticket agencies scattered throughout Reds country. Here are just a few of them in Athens, Ohio at the Audio Buff, in Lebanon at Bashford Sporting Goods, in Newark at Sears, in Connersville at Shubies, in Newcastle at Rose City Bowl, in Ashland, Kentucky at Zwick Music, and in Huntington at Southside Pharmacy. George Foster starts it off here in the sixth inning for the Reds, down by six runs now, and swings at a slow curve by Shirley and doesn't get it. Foster has gone without a hit and two times up with a bounding ball to second and a strikeout. He swings, and there's a long drive to deep left center field. That is going to be gone home run. the Reds start the road back as Foster opens up the sixth inning with his seventh of the year. I'll tell you, he really tattooed that pitch. He hit it into the first row of the green seats in deep left center. Oh, we got one. Here's Johnny Bench. Pitch is in the dirt for a ball. Two balls and no strikes. And some changes here for San Diego. Chuck Baker is now playing at second base and center field, Daryl Thomas. Gene Richards moves to left, and of course Gamble left the ball game. 
So Baker at second, batting in the third position. Thomas, who started the game at second base, is now in center, and Richards moves to left. The 2-0 to bench. Swung on and hit very high in the left center field. John just got underneath that one a little bit, and Thomas is there to make the basket catch. Davey Concepcion, two for two in the game. A bunch single, third base side in the second, a double to left in the fourth. Roger Craig is now out to talk to his pitcher. We get a partial score in from Omaha today. The Indianapolis Indians meeting Omaha. Doug Capilla making his second start since being sent down by the Reds is leading one to nothing at the end of two. Arturo Defreitas homered in the second with none on his sixth of the year. And Nashville continues to lead Savannah. That's two to one at the end of six innings of play in Savannah. Call strike to Davey. He's jumped his batting average up now to a mark of 319. Strike is called. No balls and two strikes. Junior Kennedy will begin to loosen up. Davey behind two strikes. Shirley comes to him. Concepcion pops it in the air. Shallow center. Thomas is waiting and makes the catch. Two out. Donnie Warner will be the batter. Warner walked in the second, but Shirley really got in on him. Suffered a broken bat and a bouncer back to the mound in the fourth and now fouls his first pitch away. Six to one, San Diego leading. After a big four runs in the top of this inning. Swing and a miss. Reds have come back to get a leadoff home run from George Foster, but Shirley has bounced back to retire bench on a fly and Concepcion also on a fly ball to center. The nothing in two pitch. Up and in for a ball. Playing out of miss. That's a strikeout for Shirley, and that's his third in the game for the Reds in the sixth. One run on one hit. At the end of six complete, the Padres six, and the Reds one. Well, folks, it's that time of year again. Time to cool it with Crawford Nichols Heating and Cooling. All of Columbus is cooling it this spring and summer with Westinghouse add-on air conditioners installed by those cool it experts at Crawford Nichols. Westinghouse add-on air conditioning is a wise investment for the homeowner. Air conditioning adds to the resale value of your home. More important, it allows your loved ones to relax at home during these hot spring and summer months. Installation is a breeze for the experts at Crawford Nichols. An add-on air conditioner can be connected directly to your present home heating system. You'll be glad to know that Crawford Nichols offers 24-hour emergency service. This assures cooling comfort all season long. Call Crawford Nichols Heating and Cooling today for a free home cooling estimate. To cool it, call 876-1234. You'll find Crawford Nichols in the yellow pages under Heating and Cooling. Well, we have the final three innings of first game action here at Riverfront Stadium. We trail the San Diego Padres by a score of 6-1. to one. It'll be Bill Allman to lead it off against Dave Tomlin, a change defensively for the Reds. And to tell you about that and call the seventh, here once again is Joe Nuxall. All right, Marty. Junior Kennedy has replaced Joe Morgan at second base. Allman started the sixth inning. The Padres scored four unearned runs, reaching on an error by Pete Rose at third base. He is one for three this afternoon. Double back in the second. 
Flying to Rose in the fourth and reaching on the air in the sixth. He scored two of the six Padre runs. Dave Tomlin in his second inning of work. Winds and delivers and Allman swings and bounces to Rose. Pete has it off to his left, throwing the bench one out. One away, and that brings Rick Sweet to the plate. Sweet has reached all three times up this afternoon. Intentionally walked in the second, walked in the fourth, and reached on an arrow by bench in the sixth. Six to nothing, San Diego leading. And they've scored six times, only one of the er runs earned. Tomlin low with a fastball to Sweet, ball one. Dave back to the plate. Sweet swings and bounces at the bench. John has it, head high, goes for the bag, and quickly two away for the Padres. Two out, that'll bring the pitcher Bob Shirley to the plate. Bob officially 0 for 1. He has had two sacrifice bunts in the second inning on the suicide squeeze. Shirley bunting in front of the plate to score Darrell Thomas. Then in the fourth inning, a sacrifice bunt. And in the sixth, he bounced to bench as the runners were going. First and second to pitch. He swings and lines at the right field. That'll drop for a base hit. Hit number four off Dave Tomlin and number eight in the ball game for the Padres. So Shirley at first base with two out, and the batter will be Gene Richards. Shirley getting the windbreaker down at first base. Richard, 0 for 2 officially. He bounced out in the first, reached on an error in the sixth, walked in the fourth and the sixth. First pitch, a breaking ball, a call strike to Gene Richards. Best playing well behind. Johnson delivers. Richard swings and chops a foul off the first base line. Hopefully the count goes on too to Gene Richards. Second game, two right-handers, Diocristo and Seaver. The 0-2 pitch. Swung on and it's lined over the jumping Kennedy into right center field. Grippy over. He cuts it off. Saves us a run right there. And they're going to hold it surely up at uh, third base. But Kenny, a good play in cutting the ball off and saved us a run. Hit number nine for the Padres. A double for Gene Richards. His fifth double of the year. Shirley at third base, Richard at second, and the batter, Ozzie Smith. Smith will go to the plate hitting right-handed. Second time in the game, second time he's faced Tomlin. He swings and ground ball. Kennedy has it off to his left. Going on the bench, and that's the inning. For the Padres in the seventh, no runs, a couple of hits, seven of errors, two runners left on base, and at the middle of inning number seven, San Diego six, Cincinnati one. That melody you hear is that pleasure near. Real beer lovers know that means throws. No play that friendly sound. Pass that great For more than 200 years, the Stroh family's been making great beer. Taking pride in what they're doing, doing it their own way, doing it the Stroh's way. So play that friendly sound, have that 
great taste around Real dear lovers know Real dear lovers know that means The Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan Bob Shirley just now getting to the mound and Padres lead six to one. For the Reds, it'll be Junior, it'll be Dave Collins, and then the pinch hitter for Tomlin, Ray Knight on deck, and then Pete Rose. Looking at the scores in the National League after one inning of Montreal, no score, the Pirates and the Expos. They played three at New York, Philadelphia leading the Mets five to one. And at the middle of the third inning of Chicago, the Cubs two, the Cardinals nothing. Atlanta and Houston just getting underway, and San Francisco and Los Angeles later on. In the American League, a doubleheader of Detroit, first game, four and a half innings have gone by, and Detroit leads Boston one to nothing. Baltimore, Cleveland in a first game of a doubleheader, Baltimore leading three to nothing after seven and a half. And New York and Toronto, Toronto in a doubleheader, and after four, New York leads two to one. Just getting started. Minnesota did not score in the first inning. Came out to the plate. Chicago had opened a doubleheader. Texas, California, at Milwaukee. All right, Dave Collins leads it off. Dave, one for two. He had an infield single in the second inning. A ball he chopped off to the left of the mound, and Shirley fielding the ball, looking to third, but had no play there. And that's the base hit for Collins. With that. Five hits up. Bob Shirley and one of them, George Foster's seventh home run of the year in the sixth inning, leading off for one run. For Bowen throwing in the Reds' bullpen, he would be the pitcher in the top of the eighth inning. Shirley delivers, and Collins tries to push a bunt first base side, but pushes it foul. Only one. Receiver for the Reds in the second game, and right-hander John D'Acquisto for the Padres. The old one to Collins. He takes the throw ball, one on one. Ray Knight on deck. One one delivery. Collins swings, bounces it back to the mound. Bobbled by Shirley, picks it up there and throws the tennis and gets Collins. Shirley had it in his glove, came up the ball bouncing away and barehands it and throws Collins out by a step and a half. So one away, Ray Knight the better. Knight hitting 143. He's had one hit seven times in play. Early winds and delivers outside a ball. Knight at the plate hitting for Dave Thompson. Well, the Padres with six runs, with five of them unearned runs. The 1 0 delivery. That's a strike, and the count evens 1 1. Outfield playing range straight away. That's the soccer side, and now the 1 1. That's swung on it. Well, the right field going back, Winfield still going, and that ball is off the fence. On his way to second, and now he decides to hold up. Ray died, and that's... Ray had it made all the way, but boy, he was about halfway there and decided he better not chance it knowing Winfield's arm. So Ray returns to first base with hit number six for the Reds off 
Bob Shirley. Oh, with one out, Knight at first base, and the batter will be Pete Rose. I hit that ball well, the ball hitting about three, four feet up on the right field wall, one field playing it perfectly off the wall, and Ray deciding not to chance the double, returned the first base. So that's where he's at, and Rose at the plate. Pete one for three. Had a single his last time up. Shirley delivers, and Rose swings and fouls. Reds need five to get even with the Padres. They trail six to one. Ken Grippy on deck. And then it'll be Junior Kennedy. Junior hitting in Joe Morgan's spot in the lineup. Early sets and delivers. Rose takes it low and then count evens one ball, one strike. Tennis playing behind Ray Knight down at first base. Early to the belt, delivers. Swung on and fouled on a play to the right side. Down goes the ball, two strikes to Rose. Waiting on the sign from Sweet. He has it the stretch. And the one two. He takes it outside and the count evens two balls, two strikes. Pitch a little bit high and outside to Pete. The count even is two and two. He rose now with three thousand and fifteen hits and his next plateau, Cap Anson, swinging a foul back. Anson with 3,081 hits. Out holding two and two to Rose. Sets delivers. Rose takes it high. Full count. Now we get a couple on and another long ball, and we're right back in it. Full count to Pete. A payoff on the way, and that swung on and hit into right center field where Thomas is there to make the play. A two away now, and the batter. Ken Griffey. Penny 0 for 3 this afternoon. Rounded to short. Rounded to first and popped out foul territory to third. And the batting average at 323. Came into the game 333. Pitch. Check swing foul. Outfield playing Ken straight away. The 0 1. If he takes it inside and it leads away from the pitch. 1 1. Two out with Ray Knight at first base. Pete Rose before Pete lines one to 
Thomas in right center field for the second out of the inning. Here's the 3-1. That's high, and Griffey draws the walk. Third walk issued by Bob Shirley. So for the rest of the inning, they get a run on two hits. There were no errors and two runners left on base. And at the end of seven, San Diego six, Cincinnati two. You blew the kid to wish him luck, but the only thing he did was duck. Brush your breath, brush your breath, brush your breath with Dempsey. Welcome, sorry. Well, the seven inning total shows San Diego with six runs on nine hits, no errors. The Reds two runs, seven hits, and three runs. Dave Winfield is two for four with a run batted in. He's up now after Baker has started off the Padre eight with a ground out to short. Dave jumping his batting average to 272 after starting off the day at 265. He squares to Bunt and does. Along the third baseline, Warner picks it up, throwing to first. He bounced it in the dirt and it went off Bench's glove. Winfield, a base runner, as he dropped one on the third baseline. That'll be a Bunt single for Big Dave. And the Padres are now in double figures hitwise with 10. Now Gene Tennis on base three consecutive times after popping up in the second. He's walked twice and he's single. Now well, the all-star balloting is now underway and eight reds are on this year's ballot. Ben, Dreesen, Morgan, Rose, Concepcion, Foster, Geronimo, and Griffey. All eight of the regulars this year's game will be on the 11th of July at San Diego Stadium. Breaking pitch stays high and inside. Woo, way inside, and, and so much so, in fact, that tennis is hit by the pitch. So he'll go on to first as Winfield moves to second. Bourbon nailing tennis. Two men on with one out, and the batter, Daryl Thomas. John Warner now goes out to talk with Bourbon. Thomas one for four. Turning a double play back in the fifth inning, and a good time for one right now. Still within striking distance of the Padres as Thomas swings and fouls it out of play. You can hold him right here and maybe generate the kind of eighth inning today that we did yesterday. Six times the Reds crossed the plate in the eighth of yesterday's game to come from behind and win it. Thomas slowly back in as Winfield takes his lead at second. Tennis at first. High for a ball. It's one and one. Way outside. Two balls and one strike. Marky hoping to get a good one from Tom Sieber in the second game today because we talk about how much work that bullpen has been getting. Right now, he feels like it's a bit overworked. Tom is talking with third base coach Don Williams. Come back and get a similar type effort from Tom today that we saw up in Montreal in his last outing. You know, with Bonham going tomorrow night, Norman on Tuesday, and Moscow on Wednesday. guys a little rest. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Runner at second breaking along with tennis but it's foul out of play. He 
Keep an eye on Daryl Thomas, Pedro is. Two balls, two strikes. Now we've got Concepcion coming in from shortstop to talk with four bones. And Davey will return to his position. Thomas at the plate, two and two the count. Allman do up next. Trying to keep Winfield close. Here's a pitch. This one popped in the air to center field. Collins moving over to his right to make the catch for out number two. So it'll be Billy Allman in. And his first hit in the series in the second inning, a two-base hit. But his fifth line to third reached on an error and back to third. batting 3-12. Andres have out hit us 10 to 7. We've out aired them 3 to nothing and they lead 6 to 2. Allman pops it up and that should be the inning. Johnny Bench will play it at first base as he pounds the glove and puts it away. No runs, one hit, two men left on. We move to the home eighth inning with a score, San Diego 6 and Cincinnati 2. This was a big inning yesterday. The Reds will go with Johnny Bench, Davey Concepcion, and Donnie Warner in the bottom of the eighth inning. Bob Shirley has to record only six more outs to win his second game of the year and give the San Diego Padres not only their first victory in this series, but also only their fourth complete game all season long. Randy Jones, Bob Ochinko, and Gaylord Perry all have gone the distance in previous starts. Here's a pitch to Bench, and he takes his swing on the pitch eye. Johnny without a hit and three times up. Strike to him, one and one. Shirley shakes off the sign. Now gets what he wants and delivers. Bench lines one foul down the third base side. One ball and two strikes. Atlanta and Houston. And in the bottom of the second zone, the Braves lead one nothing. They won 13-0 over the Atlanta Braves last night, and their pitching staff has come up with a couple of shutouts in a row. A game above 500 and only four and a half games behind San Francisco. So our division really tightening up. Swing and a miss. Shirley ran one right in on Bench's hands and chalks up his fourth strikeout. Concepcion is two for three. And nine and a half games separating the six clubs in our division. San Diego in fifth place, seven back. Then the Braves nine and a half games out. In fact, the two divisions in the National League are tighter than those over in the other league. There's a call strike to Davies. Philadelphia leading Chicago by a game and a half. Montreal by two. in the American League. Oakland owns a game and a half advantage over California in the West. And Detroit and Boston are in a virtual tie at the first round of the United With New York on the two games out. Moving out of play. Gary Matthews. So Gary coming off the disabled list to crack one out to give the Braves the early lead. Too 
back. And those starting pitchers in Los Angeles will be Bob Nepper, five and one. Against Bert Hooten, two and four. The rubber match of the three-game series. The Giants won the Friday night game. The Dodgers got the winning run home in the bottom of the ninth last night when Randy Moffitt hit Bill Russell with the bases loaded to force in the winning run. Shirley with a 2-2 pitch. Line drive, glove by Billy Allman. Nice play. Allman leaping to pick off the line drive, and the eighth inning for Cincinnati is over. No runs, no hits, one error, one left. And as we go to the ninth, a four-run separation. The Padres six and the Reds two. Top of the ninth inning, and we trail the San Diego Padres six to two. It'll be Rick Sweet, the catcher, to lead things off for San Diego against Pedro Borbon. Nice to get a little recognition on the message board out in center field. Burnaman. Nice way to spell my last name. B e r n n a m a n. Rick Sweet here in the first game has walked twice, reached on an era, and bounced out to first base. Marty Burnerman. Bourbon in the eighth inning gave up a bunt single to Winfield. He hit Gene Tennis with a pitch. Padres had two on with one out, but he got Thomas on a fly ball and Allman on a pop-up. Here's a pitch to the left-hand batter, and it's at the letters for a call strike. Reds have used Sarmiento, Tomlin, and Bourbon. Manny went five. He's a pitcher of record. Tomlin, two innings, and Bourbon working in his second frame. Low inside, one ball, one strike. In the ninth, the Reds will be sending up a pinch hitter for Pedro, then Rose, and then Griffey. Two balls, a strike. Sweet has gone all the way behind the plate. Swing and a miss, and the count goes to two balls and two strikes. And almost every inning, he was lifted for a pinch runner in the seventh of Friday night's game. And... Bob Davis went behind the plate for the last couple of innings in that one, but Sweet's been back there for all the rest. Three balls and two strikes. Forbone ready with a payoff pitch, and he fouls it out of play. San Diego scored twice in the second, four unearned runs in the sixth inning. The Reds with single runs in the first and the, and the sixth. Bob Shirley, one for two with a couple of sacrifice bunts and a run batted in. Bob has not only done the job on the mound, but he was called upon back in the second with the bases loaded. And one out. 
to squeeze a run home, and that he did. Had another sacrifice in the fourth. And now lines his second base hit of the game, this one into left field. Well, Shirley has done it all as the Padres come up with their second hit off four ball and a number 11 in the game. Bob will get the jacket on down at first base, and the hitter will be Gene Richards. Been on four times in the game after bouncing to Rose in the first and Era in the second on Concepcion. Got him aboard. Two intentional walks and a seventh inning double to right center. Pitch. Strike to him. Well, we've got Ballard Smith, the executive vice president of the San Diego Padres on hand for the series. One ball and one strike. The Padres, one of two clubs in baseball to own their own airplane. Ray Kroc went out and purchased a plane between season last winter. Two and one to count. So San Diego, along with the Dodgers, who have had their own plane for many years. And the two clubs in baseball. Here's a line smash that hits the third base umpire. Goes into foul territory, and now the runner surely comes to third, and he's tagged out or safe. Safe. Marky Anderson coming on out of the dugout as the line drive hit Charlie Williams. It bounced over to the Padre dugout. Pete Rose ran after the ball, and then Davey Concepcion, trying to beat Bob Shirley to the bag, took the throw from Rose. It looked like Davey had him. But Williams calls safe, and Sparky getting a little bit heated now. He got into it with Williams yesterday when he was a plate umpire, and now really giving it to him today. Marty, uh, it's hard to say, but uh, I, I agree with Sparky. It's Charlie Williams called the ball foul first, without a doubt, and... Uh, Williams uh, in foul territory when the ball hit him, and of course a line drive, but uh, Sparky is really hot. Uh, and of course, Charlie having a tough time of it in this series. I'm not too sure that Davey didn't have Shirley going into third base either, but I don't think Charlie even really saw that play. The uh, ball hitting uh, Williams on the right arm, but... Uh, I'd have to agree 100% with Sparky that Williams called the ball foul first and then fair. And uh, I think Sparky's trying to get a clear explanation of, of how the play really went. And apparently he's not getting anything too clear from Mr. Williams at the moment. Well, Ed Bargo is standing right alongside Charlie Williams, and Ed's nothing but acting as a spectator. He's not saying anything, and... Sparky is nose-to-nose -nose with Charlie Williams. Now, Bargo having to hold Williams back away from Anderson. And boy, I'll tell you, they are really going at it now. Sparky is as red as a beet. He gives Charlie Williams everything he can before getting his last word in and now comes back to the dugout. And no question about the fact Charlie Williams was standing in foul ground when the ball hit him. And his first gesture was foul, and then he swung back and indicated fair. So that'll be a base hit credited to Gene Richards with Bob Shirley going to third base. Tell you the amazing thing about what we've seen of Charlie Williams, it looks like he just refuses to throw anybody out of a ball game. Here's a foul back. Not that, that we're rooting to see anybody being pitched out, but he got some pretty good heat from Dick Williams up in Montreal four days ago. Nothing happened. He caught it all day yesterday from both sides, and nobody got thrown out. And I don't know that you can work an umpire any better than Sparky just did. Here's a bunt first base side. A run is in, and Smith is going to be tagged out. As the Padres squeeze another run across. So Credit Smith with a sacrifice bunt and an RBI, and that makes it 7 2 San Diego as Gene Richards moves on to second base.
two away in the San Diego ninth inning. And the batter will be second baseman Chuck Baker. Baker led off the eighth and grounded out to shortstop. A ball is low inside to him. And this equals, well, not quite, one run short. San Diego led 6 nothing at one point. Here's a foul. That's been the biggest lead they've had in the game. Lead by five runs right now at 7-2. to two. One and one to count on Baker. Ground ball to third. Rose has it. He will tag out Gene Richards, and that's all for San Diego in the ninth inning. One run, two hits. No errors and one left on, and after eight and a half, the Padres seven, the Reds two. Man, I love to drive on the open road and listen to that old night wind blow. Chewing Red Fox, it sure does ease my mind. Riding this ribbon on through the dark. No place to stop, no place to park. Me and Red Fox chewing tobacco, making up lost time. The Red Fox folks know what they're doing when it comes to making tobacco for chewing. For relaxation, man, it's one of a kind. It's moist and soft and mild for sure. The flavor's fresh, the taste is pure. It settles you down and helps a man unwind. Why don't you try Red Fox? Look for it in the white pouch with the picture of old Red taking it easy. Red Fox chewing tobacco. Now it's better than ever. So when that highway starts to call, run with the fox that beats them all, Red Fox. Because Mr. Taking It Easy never tasted so good. Red Fox. Here in the bottom of the ninth inning, the Reds need five to get even, and they'll start it off by bringing Kenny Henderson off the bench to pinch hit for Pedro Bourbon. Bourbon goes two, allows three hits and a run. Also hit a batter. Henderson with his first plate appearance in a Cincinnati uniform yesterday and flying out. He'll be followed by Rose and Griffey. Kenny on the year batting... 217 with a home run and four runs batted in. Shirley delivers and Henderson takes it high for a ball. Kenneth switch hitter this season against left handers batting 143, but he's only been to the plate 23 times. That's a call strike. One ball, one strike. Swung on and a broken bat pop-up will be played by the first baseman, Gene Tennis. One down. Here's Pete Rose. Rose with a base hit in the fifth inning. One for four, batting 297. Hope you'll stay tuned between games. Joe will be back immediately following the completion of this with Red's wrap-up. We'll then be turning it back to our stations and right now in the process of trying to find out how much time we're going to have between games. There's a breaking pitch down and into Pete. Check swing, ground ball to second. Baker makes the easy pickup. Guns him down at first base. Two away. Well, Ken Griffey is up now with two down and nobody on base. San Diego and out away from breaking this modest three-game winning streak of Cincinnati's and winning their first game in this series. Griffey 0 for 3. Drew a walk in the seventh inning. He pops it up foul on a butt attempt. It'll carry out a play. Things have turned out. Pretty wise move by Roger Craig. Deciding Friday night to go with Bob Shirley in this game and save Bob Ochinko for the Dodgers. 
one strike pitch, high a ball, one ball, one strike. Well, we've just been informed we'll have 30 minutes between games, so we'll be turning it back to our stations along the network line for seven minutes after the post-game show, and then following that seven minutes of local programming, Joe will be back with Red warm-up preceding game number two that will feature Tom Seaver against John DiAquisto. Shirley 1-1 with Ken Griffey. Left-hander pitches, and Griffey bunts at it and does not get it. One and two. The kick and the pitch. Swung on, bouncer foul will be at first base. Junior Kennedy, who knocked in a run with a single in the seventh inning, is on deck. Here in the ninth, Henderson has popped up to tennis. Rose is grounded out to second. And a count on Griffey of one ball, two strikes. drive center field Daryl Thomas will make the catch and that's it in the ninth the Reds go out in order San Diego has come up with their first win in this four game series as behind the pitching of Bob Shirley they defeat the Reds 7-2 we'll be back in just a moment